Hello and welcome to In the Studio. I'm your host today, Alex Silvasatter, and my guest is Lynn Weaver, who you may recognize from Talking Point, one of our shows on Davis Community Television. And today we're going to do a little profile and find out some more about Lynn. So Lynn, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for inviting me uh, and uh, wanting to talk a little about me. Um, yes, well, let's I'm start very with, uh, I'm sorry, there's a little lag, but uh, what, uh, what brought you to volunteer at Davis Media Access? Uh, well, thank you very much for asking that question because I've been wanting to talk about that. Um, well, after I left Capital Public Radio, uh, where I had worked as an associate producer for four years, uh, mainly I was working for the daily show Insight with um, uh, Jeffrey Callison. I, I wanted to be more connected with the Davis community. After all, I live in Davis and uh, I wanted to do something. Um, I read about Davis Media and I was very impressed with the range of TV and radio shows they offered <clears throat> and the many services they provided to children, teens, and grown-ups. So I decided to volunteer. Uh, I thought I could help in some way. Okay, and how did you transition uh, to being a host and producer? Oh, well, For uh, that is another story. Um, so, um, um, I was helping a little bit as sound engineer and also I wanted to learn, I was learning a little bit how to uh, use the uh, TV cameras and then um, the regular host for In The Studio was going back to Australia and someone asked me if I wanted to try to find a good topic and host in the studio. Well, I knew how to produce a show, but I had no idea about hosting a TV show. I'd never been in front of a TV camera. So the first time, well, I can tell you, it wasn't pretty because when I found out that we would not use a teleprompter, a teleprompter, and I had prepared an exceedingly long introduction to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> and much of, it, much of it was off point. My poor guest looked a bit resigned to listen to me. And it, I felt it was a disaster. But I remember afterwards, uh, Autumn went over the show with me and she was so kind. Somehow I passed the test. <laughs> well, and Autumn's our executive director, for anyone who doesn't know. So yes, and, and she, she's yes. been in front of the camera before, so she's used to it. So do you feel more confident now that you've done it many, many times? I mean, you host your own show, Talking Point, where you, you interview people. Yes, I feel much more confident, except for the first 30 seconds when I see that red dot and I'm staring <laughs> at the red dot. <laughs> and all of a sudden I think, oh, I can't remember anything. Fortunately, the guests <laughs> have been so helpful. <laughs> I let them talk a lot. <laughs> That's good. That's what you're there to hear from them, right? Um, yes. So originally you're from Massachusetts and what brought you from Massachusetts out to Davis, California in the first place? Well, um, my family and I had lived in Boston, in the Boston area, since I first came to this country from Europe with my husband. And um, I had uh, been a college teacher. Well, I got my MA at Tufts University, and then I went on to be a college teacher part-time while my, while my children were growing up. And later, I became a software consultant for various tech, tech companies. Um, mostly, I was doing voice recognition work and writing scripts and parsing them uh, to, uh, for the audio, to build audio models. Uh, so 
I brought up three wonderful children, and uh, they were now grown up and away from home. So my husband was a biophysicist and the chair of the physics and astronomy department at Tufts University. And he was impressed with the research in his field being done at the Genome Center at UC Davis. So we decided to spend the 2006 sabbatical years in Davis. <clears throat> well, um, he passed yeah. away suddenly in April yeah. of that year. And um, I decided to continue our journey west and set up an endowment in his honor at the Genome Center. So could you tell us a little about the uh, the endowment at the, at the biology, the Genome Center at UC Davis? Sure. Um, the children and I set up um, an endowed lectureship. It has a long name <laughs> at the Genome Center where David was going to collaborate uh, with one of the um, scientists there. Uh, it's called the David L. Weaver Endowed Lectures uh, for uh, Biophysics and Computational Biology. <laughs> Um, we have had a lecture every year since then, and we were very lucky uh, to have a prominent physicist and biophysicist and even a couple of Nobel Prize. And uh, last April was going to be the 14th year, uh, but unfortunately uh, we couldn't, we had to cancel because of COVID-19. Um, yeah. The endowment um, uh, brings the scientists to UC Davis for two days, and there is a public lecture which is um, open to the to the public, and it's sort of uh, in lay people uh, terms, <laughs> but sometimes it's always about me um, and. Uh, then two days, the second day spent uh, interacted with with young scientists, and uh, we're very proud of of what the children and I have done in honor of David. So, um, if you have the time, everybody can come. The next one, unfortunately, it's scheduled for. April 12, 2001, <laughs> 2021, sorry, I'm being muddled here. All right, um, and uh, th that's, is that the Weaver Award? Is that the, what goes to a scientist or is that another separate? Uh, well, the up? Weaver Award is actually um, another foundation that uh, we are setting up for the Center for Neuroscience. Uh, and uh, that is uh, a travel award for PhD students, graduate students, and very young faculty to go to travel to conferences and to share their latest results in their research and uh, uh, also, you know, uh, interact with other people around the world. So that is... Um, there's an article that they published about me uh, at the uh, Center for, uh, at the Genome Center, and you can follow the link if you're interested. But okay. I also wanted to talk, I also, if I may, since you've been so yeah. kind to ask all the right questions, if I may, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, how I got to work for Capital Public Radio after I came sure, to Davis. Sure, of course. To Davis. So um, when I got to Davis, of course, it was a very difficult time of my life, and I felt very lonely. I was still consulting for a, a voice recognition software company back in Boston, but I really needed a change, and I needed to interact with people in this area. So I was intrigued by the program Insight, I would listen to every morning and especially I was intrigued by the quality of the interviews and the topics. So when I read they were looking for unpaid interns, I wrote to them and during my interview 
I said, well, I'm not 20 anymore, but maybe you can use me for my technical skills. So they took me on as an intern. And six months later, I was hired. <laughs> I, we were a very small team. Uh, and so I learned to do so many things. I learned, first of all, I learned how to uh, find interesting topics in the papers or online. And that remember, this was a daily show with three topics each day. And so wow. I became, I was helping to find the topics to pre-interviews, uh, interview the uh, guests on the phone and uh, also coordinate their coming to the studio and so on. I also help with um, audio editing quite a bit when we couldn't get the guest to come into the studio and Jeffrey Callison would uh, record uh, the phone conversation. And um, at times I would also do the sound engineering, which was always <laughs> traumatic because it was a live show. And uh, so we had to do all, all sorts of things. So I loved it. I loved it. And but I think I love to work for Davis Media even more. I mean, to volunteer with Davis Media. <laughs> well, that's that's fantastic that you got such a broad background. And you mentioned earlier, this will be our final question because we're running out of time, but uh, you mentioned that you came from Europe originally. So could you tell us maybe a little bit about that and the languages you speak? Because uh, most people from Europe speak yes, more than um, uh, Yes. Um, well, I, I was born in Europe. Uh, I was actually born in Berlin, Germany, because my father worked for the Foreign Service. And, um, but then... Then after that, um, our, my, our family languages were French and Italian, and uh, we traveled all over Europe. But uh, uh, I finally um, was sent to a school in, uh, in France. Uh, and then after that, I attended the uh, uh, University of Geneva, where I studied linguistics and economics. and. Uh, I met my husband uh, when he was visiting CERN uh, in Geneva, and I was working as a scanner. It was a university job. Uh, I was paid by the hour, and I would go to CERN every afternoon after my classes and uh, uh, just click little buttons on uh, to, to uh, check some of the uh, protone uh, pictures that uh, they had been scattered in the cyclotron. So to me, it was a complete discovery of a new world. And that's where I met David. Um, we got married in France and we came to the United States. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> all right. well, and then you made it all the way there to Davis. Yes, a well, long journey west. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, um, Lynn, for sharing your background and uh, what you've been working on recently with us and your time at Capital Public Radio. And that's all we have time for today and in the studio. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And if you'd like to find out more about the Weaver Award or the uh, David L. Weaver Endowed Lecture Series, you can uh, follow the links that will be in the description below the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Alex.